Thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker. The first thing I want to say, like many other speakers, is, is I'd like to put on record my thanks for the Health Secretary, his team of ministers, uh, for the outstanding work they have done over recent months in very, very difficult circumstances. COVID-19, as we all know, is a, is a very difficult disease. It's a terrible disease. It can be fatal. It, my, my father got it. My father's an NHS doctor, consultant, um, you know, very much in the sort of target danger range. Uh, and you know, he got it, survived, and is fit and well. My mother also got it from him, she likes to add. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> she recovered much faster. Um, but, but this isn't, you know, this is a really, really dangerous disease. And we all know that our first act as whether it be members of parliament or those who are ministers, is to preserve life. And this government has tried to do that as best they can. But I won't uh, lie, Mr Deputy Speaker, I found these restrictions that the government has been forced to put on us over the last few months very difficult. I've wanted to go to big events. I've wanted to have lots of people around. I've wanted to go on holiday without having to quarantine when I've come back. I've wanted to do a lot of things. And I know that many of my constituents, many of whom have, have written to me and have got in touch with me in many ways over recent weeks and months, have felt the same. It is very, very difficult. As the Prime Minister said, we are a freedom-loving people. We want to do you know, what we want within the law, and we want to have social contacts and work the way we want and take the tube and do all of these things. And it is very frustrating. But just because it is frustrating does not mean we do not need controls. And I have spent a huge amount of time thinking, researching, talking to people, reading over recent weeks and months about the different ways in which we can, we can go through this. And of course, we can all point to a decision that we may have made slightly differently, slightly earlier, slightly later. But overall, I think the government's approach to this has been right thus far. And going ahead, looking forward, there are some things that I believe we need to bake into our approach now. The first thing is that we all need to remember that we might have to live with this virus for many months. We hope there will be a vaccine, but there may not be. Or indeed, if there is one, it may not be very effective at first. And we have to accept that uh, from the start. We need to make sure we keep our children in school, keep businesses open, and we are now better placed due to the good work of the government, whether it be in test and trace, uh, improving the testing capabilities, and the support given, financial support given to many businesses. We need to keep those things. We also need to remember that social contact does matter. It isn't a sort of something that's sort of a, a nice ancillary to life. It's critical. Loneliness Bad mental well-being, as we've heard from many speakers, can also um, you know, damage people's lives hugely. I've been very struck by the number of people that have got in touch with me and said, I live alone, I have no family. If you have a lockdown, I don't know if I can take that. So I do believe we need to bear social contact in mind as of critical importance. And the last thing I would say is that I would urge the government, as appears to have happened during the course of the day today with various discussions, that Parliament does need more of a say in these decisions at the appropriate time. Uh, because I think that would not just help MPs understand the, the requirements more, but it would also help the government and the public explain those to our constituents who we represent.